All right, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Jeff and today we are going to have some fun playing Magic. And the fun thing that we are trying to do today is we are playing around this card called Sarkin's Unsealing, which you may have heard of it already, uh, but let me read it real quick. It says, whenever you cast a creature spell with power 4, 5, or 6, then Sarkin's Unsealing deals 4 damage to any target. And when you cast a creature spell with power 7 or greater, Sarkin's Unsealing deals 4 damage to each opponent for each creature and Planeswalker they control. So uh, basically this can get out of hand. It is a 4 uh, mana uh, enchantment, so it does take quite a bit to, to cast it and put it down on the battlefield. Uh, but once we do, we go off like crazy in this deck. And so some of the things we're trying to do, we're trying to ramp into our Sarkin's Unsealing. So no matter what, um, with the way that we do this, uh, I think the earliest that we can actually play it is on turn three. Uh, so our goal is just to try to get a Line of Warrior Elves or a Servant of the Conduit on turns one and two, play a Serkins and Ceiling, and then just go off playing tons of crazy, awesome, good things uh, that have at least four power of toughness and, are, and that are really resilient creatures or things that we can play a lot of on a turn. Um, or we get into our crazy big ones where like we trigger a 5 damage to their face and 4 damage to their face with Sarkin's Unsealing. Uh, and then we get into things like Carnage Tyrant, which will just wipe their entire board, or a Galta. Uh, we could play Gigantosaurus, but we're playing, I think just with the way we're playing red, it's a little bit more consistent just to play Carnage Tyrant, uh, to play Galtas. Um, and then we're actually playing this card, Rishkar's Expertise, which plays amazingly with Sarkin's Unsealing. Because what it does is we can draw cards equal to the uh, power, which is crazy, <laughs> equal to our greatest power on the board. So, I mean, if we have a Galta on board, we're drawing 12 cards, and then we get to cast a card for free as long as it's 5 mana cost or less. Um, which means we can cast the Sarkins and Sailing if we draw into it that way. Um, we can cast something else for, that does four uh, damage. I, like we can cast a Demanding Dragon, a Rekindling Phoenix, anything like this. Deal four damage to something for free after drawing tons of cards. Uh, and then we also are playing this Colossal's Majesty. Um, so I I do have another version of the Sarkins uh, Unsealing deck coming out uh, tomorrow. So I'm going to do these back to back because I have... I wanted to build one that was more just based around red green you know just get big stuff out i think it's a little bit more consistent and then i'm doing my ultra janky version tomorrow <laughs> and so i hope you come back it's going to play a little bit more around this colossal majesty with it as well um, and i'll explain it more in tomorrow's video so please subscribe so you can get notified when that comes out uh, and give us a like so i know that you like these videos uh, but we're going to go ahead and try this out we're trying sarkin's powerhouse in Arena Standard, and here we go. All right, here we are playing Sarkin's Powerhouse in Arena Standard, and I am super excited to play this deck. And uh, I mean, there's, and this looks like a pretty good hand. Ah, man. I mean, we're hoping for land to draw into Sarkin's and Ceiling, and then actually want to play Steel Leaf after. So this is one of the reasons that it's okay to play. Uh, double color is that Steel Leaf is great on turn three and we want to play that if we can but sometimes holding it back for more burn is actually okay so we're going to keep this hoping for either a Serpent of the Conduit or land uh, to get into our Sarkins and Ceiling first and then the rest of this deck uh, hand is pretty amazing after that point so I mean hoping that they don't let's see a tap land we're actually okay with that for playing next turn so we're going to play land into the land or else and this way i mean as long as it survives then we can play um a servant of the conduit if we draw into it and the shelter thicket kite cell free but are going to take our sarkin and ceiling unfortunately which definitely slows us down a lot here uh but we're going to play sheltered thicket Past the turn. I really like the Bristling Hydra here because with uh, what's looking like mono black so far has a lot of targeted removal and Bristling Hydra can of course survive that. And so any way to get our Galta out a little bit quicker, more consistently uh, will be fantastic here. So we are playing some Aether Hubs as well. We're gonna go ahead and play down the mountain and play into our Bristling Hydra. Get some energy. 
and pass the chain. All right, so they are playing the zombies. All right, so Death Baron comes out. So Death Touch is pretty bad. I've actually had a really good track record against zombies with this deck, though, because they build wide and big, but not big enough to <laughs> survive after four damage a lot of times. So uh, as long as we get a Sarkin Sealing, this can be really powerful. All right, so I think what we do is, I think if we play, uh, let's see, we won't have enough mana to play Galta as well. Uh, we won't have the extra two green there. So I think what we do is we are going to play Demanding Dragon, um, have them take some to the face or destroy a creature. I mean, we want to get this uh, Sark and the Ceiling back, but they will either have to start blocking with Kite Cell and so we can get it back, or um, just be taking five each turn. So I mean, we have a pretty quick clock on them now. Especially because we will swing in with Bristling Hydra here as well. Opponent is taking all of the time to think about it. All right, so opponent goes ahead and gives us back our Sarkins and Ceiling. Perhaps has another Kite Cell. I was just seeing this clock here, so I'm wondering if they have a way to buff this guy, which I think we're okay with that. Like, um, It slows down our Galta, but we want a Galta with the Sarkins and Ceiling. So we're okay here. Yeah, so we're just going to... And we're going to save up... Um, we're not going to pay for Hexproof unless we need it. They may have Fatal Push for this. All right, so... But they go down to 16, they have Bone Dragon. All right. So that'll resolve. It's a 6-5... So we can't go attacking with our Demanded Dragon just yet, but we also, I mean, can block it back. They won't have enough to get it back just yet. So every once in a while, Arena goes down on me a little bit like this. Like you see, I'm hovering over stuff and you can't read it. So I'm going to try to do my best to just remember what it's saying. I have to double click to play it as well. Um, so we're going to play, let's see, can we play Sarkins and Ceiling? We're just going to play Sarkins and Ceiling, play Servant of the Conduit, get some more energy. So now we have double triggers for this guy. This does have Death Touch, so we could trade there, and they wouldn't be able to get it back. But I think what we do is we actually can kill it next turn with Galta and Stillleaf. Um, so, I, I mean, we're in pretty good shape here. So we're just going to say no attackers. And then swing in for a bunch next turn. Noxious Gear Hulk is pretty good. So they're going to definitely go for a Demanding Dragon. I mean, hopefully they go for Bristling Hydra. So yeah, Demanding Dragon. And then they're going to swing in for six. Um, this, I think, I mean, we're still able to uh, play our Steel Leaf and our Galta um, with this Aether Hub. So that's totally fine. We're going to be able to wipe his entire board with that and then still swing in for six. So yeah, go to my turn. That's totally fine. Ooh, and a Carnage Tyrant. All right, so that's good for the next turn. So we're going to play Steel Leaf. We are going to hit this Bone Dragon, I believe. So it, so it, go, it goes down once we play the Galta. So I think that we actually will just go to face here. Steel Leaf into Galta, and we're going to pay green, kill everything, and then we are going to combat, and all out attack, uh, swing for six, and I don't think that we need to do anything more right here, especially with Carnage Tyrant with the Hexproof, so I mean, our Hexproof and Trample is like our best thing. Yeah, so we're, we're, we are in great shape here. They have to have a Bantu's Last Reckoning, or I think it's just game. Gravewalker. All right, so he's saying good, good game. And he scoops it up. Yep, so 
<laughs> there you go. You can see the power of Sarkins and Ceiling, and uh, that game went pretty well. We drew into everything we wanted, so and we'll go to the next game. All right, here we are again in MTG Arena Standard, and um, this is really slow, but we have everything we want at the same time. So, I mean, I am going to keep this... Um, because we had two, or yeah, I, I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna try this out. We're gonna see how it goes. More land is not necessarily what we're looking for here. Um, against red, I think we're we don't want to show them too much of what we have just yet. Um, although, and we we do have two ways to create a uh, mana for a rekindling phoenix. Blue red, Omen Speaker. Okay, so this, I think, is the Wizards deck, and there's a lot of different variations of this. So there's more, like, control -y versions, which I think this is typically in a more control -y version of it. But I actually really like this card. Being able to scry to have a body out there, and then if you are playing Wizards Lightning or Wizards Retort, um, it just gives a ton of value to your... Like, it gives you ramp for, I mean, possibly eight cards in your hand. In, in your deck, so I, that's pretty good. All right, so another Galta isn't bad here. Um, we actually, in this deck, because of Sarkins and Ceiling, we are okay playing the Galta when we already have a Galta out uh, because it does four damage to everything. It's just a massive board wipe. I think that we are in pretty good shape here being able to go a little bit more... Uh, being able to play slow on this because I think the value in our hand is going to be better than what they have as long as they aren't countering our Sarkins and Ceiling here. So we're going to play Sarkins and Ceiling. Pass the turn. And I think that we are just, until we find creatures we actually care to kill, we're just going to do all the damage towards them. And this is on the cast, and so even if we lose our Bristling Hydra to a counter or something like that, uh, we are still in great shape. Uh, just doing damage to them. Uh, hasn't played a land yet. Interesting. Swings in 4 2. We're down to 17. All right. Server of the Conduit is pretty good there as well. Uh, get us a little closer to this Galta. And we're going to play Bristling Hydra. And do damage to them. And we're just hoping for anything, any other creatures that we can get uh, that we can actually play next turn. I mean, we could play the Hash Up Oasis to pump them up and maybe then play Galta. Uh, we wouldn't have enough mana. So, yeah, I mean, we need to draw into... I'm hoping like a Rekindling Phoenix would be pretty good next turn. Especially with what they're playing here. I'm guessing they're going to have targeted removal. And so any of our, like a Galta would be fantastic, or uh, sorry, a Carnage Tyrant actually is our best draw next turn. Gutter Snipe is pretty good. So this is the Gutter Snipe deck, so we definitely want to kill that next turn if we can. So another Sarkins and Ceiling I am totally fine with here. Um, and so actually we're going to play the Servant of the Conduit first, just the way the mana was tapping. Gain energy, another Sarkins and Ceiling. And then uh, we're going to go to combat and combat and attack in here. Uh, try to keep our clock as fast as possible. Uh, I think it's actually worth just trading with the gutter snipe and not paying for too much here. Um, I mean, we can kill two creatures, so we'll pay once. And then if we pay twice... I mean, we keep it alive if we pay twice, so... I mean, they'll probably have target removal, but then we make them spend it there without a gutter snipe so yeah i guess we, we go for it i mean we lose out on our second red source um but i i'm actually okay with that right now like the only card we have is the rekindling phoenix and i think we're playing two maybe three of so like it's definitely possible to run into it here and i mean that won't be good so okay they do uh looks like they are going to have some uh double removal for bristling hydra but i mean we took out Gutter Snipe, which is one of the main cards of this deck. Stopping the burn. Alright, another Sarkins and Ceiling. Uh, we're okay with that. 
So if ever we do play any creatures or this Galta or anything, like we are in such good shape now because we can do 12 damage for any creature besides our Llanowar Elves or Servant of the Conduit. And then if we ever play this Galta, we are in fantastic shape. But we will have to see. All right, so we have to play it before the Chandra gets big now too. Adding mana, maybe getting rid of the Servant. All right, that's fine. I mean, half of our deck works here for what we need. All right, so here we go. So this is why we're playing some of these smaller creatures as well. Uh, so I'm going to be able to uh, kill Chandra and do four damage here. Unfortunately, this is one of the ones that doesn't work as well with our Galtas. But so we're going to do Chandra once and yeah, once and twice here. All right, so opponent scoops it up. All right, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that, I mean, there we go. That That's kind of the power of Sarkin and Sealing. I mean, it makes everything that's already good just extra powerful. Um, and that's why I really like it. Um, and in a way, it is like you, you don't do anything. It's a turn four, do nothing on that turn. But if you're playing the two drops, and let, let's get into the, deck, the, the wrap up here at the end. All right, so there you go. You got to see the power of Sarkins and Ceiling. And uh, <laughs> I think this deck performed pretty well with what we were doing there. You saw too, like the power of playing a couple of these two drops here. So in this deck, I'm only playing four altogether. In the next deck I'm doing tomorrow, and you want to see this one, I am playing all sorts of these two drop four power creatures uh and uh <laughs> it changes up the game a lot and it actually is a very different deck even though it is focused around sarkins and ceiling uh so i'm excited for you guys to see it tell me what you think and first off tell me what you think about this deck um how it did i i think it performed pretty well um although we got pretty lucky with different card draws i mean that is most of our deck is to get lucky with sarkins and ceiling so i mean we we set ourselves up for it uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments down below some maybe changes you would do to it, uh, some different things that you like or dislike, um, and then uh, give me a like if you like the video, and uh, subscribe so you can see the video tomorrow, and thank you so much for being here, and we will see you soon.